Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, show mercy upon us, dear Father God. I ask that you help all the people who hear this message, dear Lord, to come to the understanding and the realization, dear Father, that there is a consistent need that needs to be maintained within their soul so that they may obtain heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so, you know, let's go to Romans chapter 3. Verse 19. And I want to title this one. If it's tight, it's right. Romans 3.19 says, Now we know that the, now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God it is easy to confuse manipulate lie avoid and tweak the laws of God's statutes if you are not under them for example if you find yourself saying they don't take all that it's that's not what that means well my bible says I love God but that was back then Beware of these phrases, and I would also beware of the people who use these phrases. If you are currently use these phrases, you know you are using them out of place. If your heart is right, you will know, and you will stop using these phrases if you currently use them, and you will seek the truth concerning all things. But the Bible says, Romans 3.19, that... The law is for those who are under the law. It's not to make nobody else feel guilty. If you ain't under it, you ain't supposed to feel the guilt from the law if the law is broken. That's why so many people can do wrong and say they're going to heaven because they're not under the law, so they don't feel the guilt. And then you're looking at them sideways like, wait, you was just, how you say you're doing that? I'm talking about, so... And furtherance of this message here, let's go to Psalms. Psalms chapter 18, verse 20. All right. And when dealing with this, let's keep an open mind about the people, places, and things who fall into the categories of what I'm talking about. Psalms 18 and 20. The Lord rewardeth me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, hath he recompensed me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. How can you say you are blessed when you bend the rules on righteousness? God's true people who hear and obey the law know that they are blessed according to their righteousness by faith. But how is it that well-known sinners proclaim to be, to proclaim to like be blessed and highly favored? And most of, of you believe that they are. But what you don't know is that the diligent, that, they, that basically they're, they're diligent at what they do. So the increase happens due to God's law, not to his favor. You got to understand, the Bible says the diligent should bear rule. So if you find a diligent individual who proclaims to be saved, but yet they don't reflect righteousness, but yet. They're not seeking perfection, but yet they fall underneath the category. It don't take all that. Well, my Bible says I love God, but that was back then. But yet they blessed and highly favored. They're not blessed and highly favored. They're just diligent. And God blesses the diligent, saved or unsaved. That's the, that's the law. But remember, the law is only for those who are under it. Some people have a byproduct of God's law because there are certain things God put in motion. The byproduct of walking on this earth is gravity. We all benefit from it. That's why we stuck here. Yeah. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. Let's go to Ecclesiastes and we want to drop down to verse number seven. And then we want to go to, um, I'm sorry, chapter seven, verse 14. Follow me. Here. Ecclesiastes chapter seven, verse 14. It says, in the day of prosperity, be joyful. 
but in the day of adversity, consider God also had set one over against the other. So the end that man should find nothing after him. Hmm. It is your God given right to be happy when the money is flowing and and things beyond your needs are being met. It is also your responsibility when adversity comes to know that it is only there to remind you that there is no money, time, place or person that can find out your problem like him. Oh, but if adversity never comes, then God has no need to remind you there is nothing after him. And only you know whether that's a good or a bad thing. I can't speak on that. I can't say, oh yeah, adversity never comes your way because you ain't you ain't saved. No, nah, only you know why adversity never comes your way. Some people, adversity never comes their way because God don't have to constantly keep busting them over the head to remind them that there ain't nothing after him. Adversity comes doesn't come some people way because God ain't gonna waste his time with it because you're going to hell anyway and you got enough money to uh the Bible says money answers to all things you got enough money to answer everything so you can bail yourself out consistently all right let's go to uh Philemon right um let's go to Philemon chapter Let's go to chapter 1, verse 7. Chapter 1, verse 7. It's New Testament. All right. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. We have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. I, if your love is there in your heart, other saints or people of God should be refreshed by your spirit and conversation. For example, there are some people who can sit and talk with, who you can sit and talk with about Jesus for hours. Then there are some that, that don't have or ooze the spirit of love. So you never refresh each other. Take some accountability. Ask the Lord to increase your love so that others can be won by your conversation. And God's people can be fresh by it, can be refreshed by it. All right. Let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans chapter 5, verse 21. Romans 5, verse 21. It says that all sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign on my, I'm sorry. Even so grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ, our Lord, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness until eternal life by Jesus Christ, our Lord. We all know that sin bringeth forth death, which equals hell and grace is obtained through righteousness unto eternal life, which equals heaven. So there is no such thing as an active or willful sinner saved by grace. Apples don't naturally produce cranberries. Neither can grace shield or save a willful sinner. Or a con or a con um or like a, a or a continuous I'm gonna repeat this sin or 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 a continuous um I'm gonna repent when I'm done sinner. Because you know in your mind that you've set yourself up on repenting. So you can cut the whole sinner saved by grace thing out. Like, ain't no grace for an active sinner. Just your soul crying out that tells you to repent. But it's your flesh that refuses to let you turn away. So. With that being said, let's go to Judges. All right. Let's go to Judges chapter 6, verse 17. Judges 6, 17. Judges 6, 17 says, And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, 
then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. We have to be careful that we're not taking an Old Testament approach where we're always looking for a sign from God. If you are truly saved from sin and have been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ, you have no business asking God for a sign. You are responsible for showing God a sign. Matter of fact, and the only sign you should be showing God is the sign of faith. So he can come and move on your behalf. God owes you no sign. Lord, if you just send me a sign, I, I know I shouldn't be doing this. If you got to ask for a sign for something you shouldn't be doing, God ain't going to never stop you from something you shouldn't be doing. Because it's called free will. So why you need a sign not to sin? Let's not play with it. This is Workshop for the Soul. I thank you for tuning in. And I'm out.